how loud should we record on your PreSonus Studio One screen? Go up to where it says Studio One Options, and then under Audio Setup, go to where it says Song Setup, and then Audio Input Output Setup. This diagram, or it's going to remind you of like taking geometry in school, but this is basically telling my computer where audio is coming from and where is it going. So on the left, I've got all my tracks labeled based on what I plug into that channel. So in channel two, where it says electric guitar amp, this is my SM7B. And as you can see, as I'm speaking into it, you see a healthy signal coming in. It's nice and blue. And it's going to channel two of my interface. Your interface, if you're using an audio box, it may look smaller than this. It may only have a grid that's two by two, but you need to have these M's stand for mono and then L and R, these are stereo tracks. So you need to have one stereo track and two mono tracks if you're using an audio interface with two inputs. If you don't see any of these, you simply add a mono track. So if I add a mono track, it's gonna ask me, where do I want this mono track to fit in? If you want to go through and label these, you certainly can. You can label these instead of TLM 103. I can say input one. Call it whatever you want to call it. And then on the top row, you're not going to be able to rename these on PreSonus Studio One, but this is the technical side of your interface. So here's my audio interface. Like I said, I've got two microphone inputs, input one and input two. This is my SM7B, it's plugged into channel two. On the side, I've got two guitar inputs. So this is technically input three, this is input four. And then I have an even other audio interface off screen. You can see it underneath there. That is my Sapphire Pro 40, which has eight channels. And that is also going to my RME Babyface Pro via optical. All that to say, that is why my audio interface seems to have a lot more than just two channels. Okay, but when you're done with that, make sure you hit apply. It's very important because now we're gonna add a track and I'm gonna add this one. I'm gonna call it Chris Talking. It's gonna be an audio track. I just want one of them. I want it to be green. It is a mono signal. I'm gonna be recording this one right here. And my input, this is where I relabeled. See, it says SM7B. I can select my input is basically channel two of my audio interface. This SM7B is going to the main output. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, when I hit okay, you can see I have a new track. It says Chris talking. Open up the mix tab down here at the bottom. Just click the little square that says mix and then go to this one that has an arrow point to the right, then the vertical bar. This is our input metering. When I speak, obviously you can see this is channel two of my audio interface. You can see there is a lot coming in. Now, if I open up RME's software, again, if you're using something like the Sapphire Pro 40, if you're using the AudioBox 96, you'll do this all physically on your audio interface. So your audio interface should have a couple of gain knobs on the front. We wanna adjust the gain. So on here, Basically my audio interface is digitally controlled. So here I have a gain knob for my SM7B. At the moment when I'm speaking, I'm getting about negative 12 as far as the peak values go. And then I'm averaging around negative 24 or so. If I turn the gain pot down, listen to what happens. Oh, sorry. Let's close this. Here we go. As I turn this down, less, more, more, you can't hear me. It's very quiet now. So now I'm averaging about negative 24. If I turn up the gain, now it is crazy loud and distorting. This is a bad region to be in, okay? Uh, we are essentially gonna be clipping on YouTube's side, way too high. So I set my gain, it was at 27. Test one, two. I set my gain so that at my loudest, I'm not a screamer. Most of the time when I'm doing these live streams, there's nothing that's gonna come across as screaming. I don't scream, I'm not reacting to videos, I'm not playing video games, nothing's gonna scare me. So I can set this a little bit more aggressively, but your gain knob may be in a different position depending on what type of microphone you're using. But what you wanna aim for when you are setting the gain level 
of your microphone is not too quiet and not too loud. You can always turn stuff up later within reason, but it's very difficult to turn stuff down once it's already clipped and clipping is anything over zero. So in the audio world, it kind of works like golf. It's a lot of, we're talking about negative 18 decibels, negative 12, set your metering with whatever microphone you're using so that you're in between this negative 12 and negative 24 on the meter. I'm going to show you real quick with the SM 57 we've got right here. So this is the microphone we bought on Sweetwater. I'm going to plug this into my audio interface on channel one. So I'll grab my microphone cable. All right. One end of the microphone cable goes into the microphone. It should click. And then the other end is going to go to channel one. Okay, so now my SM57 is plugged in and you shouldn't be hearing it right now. I've got it muted on the stream on purpose, but I wanna mess with the gain because as you can see, my SM7B is much louder than my SM57. I wanna get these two to where they are similarly matched. So I'm gonna grab the gain knob. I'm gonna grab the gain knob right here. You can see the SM57 on channel one. You can see the SM7B and I've got these two pretty much as close as they're going to get with me talking. I'm going to go to the gain knob of my SM57 and I'm going to turn it up so that it is closer, 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 closer to where the SM7B is. Test one, two, test one, two. Okay. So that's pretty good. Should be similarly matched. Now, different instruments are gonna produce different volumes. So when you set the gain for your SM57, just because you set the gain for your SM57 when you're speaking, doesn't mean that when you go to sing, it's gonna be the same volume. If you're using an acoustic guitar, your acoustic guitar is going to output a different volume than your speaking voice is. So this is always something that you need to be checking and you need to be correcting as needed. If I took this SM57 and I put it on my snare drum, Okay, that was my snare drum. And you can see we've clipped. So you have to set the gain knob relative to whatever you're recording at that moment. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this track. If I right click the track we've already created, I go to duplicate track. So now I've got Chris talking and Chris talking too. Click the little I button for inspector so we've got both of these visible. The first one is my SM7B. I want the second one to be my Shure SM57, which is on channel one. So if I click where it says SM7B, I can change it to input one. And now I'm going to enable these for recording. I want you to hear the difference between the two. As Soon as I do, it's gonna turn on software monitoring. Let's take a listen. Test, test, test one, one, two. two. All right, All right, let's, let's enable, enable the, the SM7. SM7. Test, 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 test one. one. All right, I've turned off software monitoring because on my audio interface, this software allows me to software direct monitor through my RME interface. On your audio box or your Scarlet, there's usually a knob or a switch for what's called like low latency monitoring or direct monitoring. So on the audio box is a blend knob between playback and recording. Usually when you're recording with the audio box, you usually want to set it around 50% so that you can hear what's happening on the computer side, but you're also hearing the direct monitoring. If you don't use software monitoring, you're going to hear this, this delay. delay. You're, you're going to hear, hear <laughs> and it's it very, very difficult, difficult to speak, speak. and it's, it's very, very difficult, difficult to sing or perform if you're hearing that much of a delay. Okay. Now it's been exaggerated because you're hearing both at the same time. But anyway, on PreSonus Studio One, as soon as you enable something for recording, recording. it pops open the uh, software monitoring. We don't want that. So click the little speaker icon. So now I'm going to record a little bit of me speaking. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the screen and I'm going to hit this record button, which is the white circle. 
Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. Hit the stop button. Now I'm gonna zoom in. If you click up here where it's got this ruler, you click and drag, you can zoom in on what you've recorded. Okay, same thing applies if you push it up, you'll zoom out, push it in, zooms in. So the top track here is my SM7B. Let's take a listen to that. If I hit, if I click on the SM7B track and I hit solo, the S key, we should just be hearing the SM7. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. If I turn off the click track with C, I'm gonna click back here, measure 10 second beat. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. Okay, that was the SM7B. Let's take a listen to the SM57. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. They sound different, not unusable though. One thing that the SM7 has going for it is this foam windscreen that it has. If you got yourself a pop filter or you put something in place so that you're not blowing up your microphone, that might be good. But that is, as you heard, that is an appropriately recorded level that we can then manipulate. So with this being recorded as quiet or as loud as it was, this little square this is called clip gain. Watch how I can manipulate the volume of these tracks after the fact. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. Here it is louder. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. Hey everybody, welcome to Making Music Live. So you can see the point I'm trying to make is that if you set a conservative value of gain, like between negative 12 and negative 24 when you're recording, you can always turn stuff up and it shouldn't change the quality. It should just get louder. And that's gonna keep you from clipping. You never want to clip. 